Hello everybody and today we are going to talk about spread footings, um, a little bit about them, what they do inside of a building or underneath a building and how to size them so that it can support all the lateral and dead loads that possibly are within that building. So let's first take a look at spread footing and spread footing design. So let's just open this up. So if we have a standard building right here, low rise building, we have a number of different live loads and dead loads that are in the building that the columns themselves are all going to support. So if we just bring up the pen here. All right, so this building has a number of loads. So if we look at anything from the roof coming down through, all the, all this, in this case, second floor framing and moving down through. So we have the roof, third, second, first floor framing all coming down through that column itself. And eventually it needs to get supported by the ground underneath. So that is our soil bearing pressure. Different types of soils or different substrate are able to resist that column's force coming down on it a certain amount and support that building. You can see here I have a number of different shapes just based on the design of the building themselves. And as long as the, the shape really doesn't matter, you can have circular, square, rectangular, or any other shape that is needed for the design. So you can see here, even with our elevator shaft, to support the loads in that area. So uh, what we need to do for our Keystone Library or for any structure that we have is basically look at our soil bearing pressure underneath the pressure from the columns above and that area to see if the force that's coming down is going to be less than the soil bearing pressure. When we're looking at a uh, typical design for uh, spread footings, let's just delete that out. When we're uh, designed for spread footings, we can see here that it follows basically a uh, standard like slab on grade or anything like that construction where you have some sort of concrete that is uh, very good at resisting any sort of compressive forces, but needs rebar to, to basically help it fight any tension forces that we would see down on the bottom of this. So as the forces come down here from everything overlying it, it's going to be pushing down, the soil's pushing up, and we're going to have a tendency to flex down at the bottom here. That flexing of those tension forces are, are, could break the concrete. So then we have rebar in there to fight that because steel is very good at combating tension forces. So here's just another construction of it right here. Pretty cool looking. And if we go to a whole site, we can see it's all excavated out. Our columns coming down, steel columns would be attached to these and then the concrete and then the actual spread footing. So let's go uh, calculate one for our library or something using some hypothetical numbers that we have floating around. All right, so let's get to this. So we have our Keystone library. We're gonna be, uh, we could technically use any single one of these interior columns right here for these calculations. Um, they're saying B3, so we're in somewhere in this ballpark right around here. So that's where we're at. Now we have forces coming in, our live loads and dead loads coming in from a number of different sections that we can see in this diagram right here. So let's get a nicer color, let's get red. So we have our girders, our beams, and then we have any of the roof structure on top. So everything from here, here, coming in that way. And now then also looking at the second floor. So those are gonna get transmitted down through that column there. And we're looking at that spread footing design right there. So let's get started with this. Uh, what we have is in our formula sheet, we have a couple of things. We have Q net, which is the net allowable soil bearing pressure, which we're gonna tell you where that's gonna be coming from. Q allowable minus the P footing. And then we can actually use this formula to find the pressure of the footing right here. And then ultimately this to see what the area is going to be of the footing and then pretty much come up with a shape from there. So we are going to say that in this scenario, we have sand with fines. So our allowable bearing pressure is 2000 pounds per foot squared uh, and relatively good grain drainage, but we don't have to worry about but this is our number there. So Q net. Let's get to 
toggle in here. So Q net equals Q allowable minus the P of a footing, the pressure of the footing from above. Q net in this case is 2000, or oh, sorry, a Q allowable is 2000 pounds per foot squared minus the P footing. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just take this whole portion of the formula right here and put it in. So T footing times 150 pounds per foot cubed. The T footing, if we look at a footing design, right, is this measurement right here, how thick it actually is. Then the column would be up on top, pushing down there. So we are, for this foot squared minus, we're gonna say our footing is just two feet thick. We're just gonna give it a number. So minus the two feet times 150 pounds per foot cubed. So 2,000 pounds per foot squared minus two times this 150 is 300 uh, pounds. The two times 150, 300 pounds per feet squared, right? Because the foot here crosses off with one of those. So 2,000 minus 300, so we have 1,700 pounds per foot squared is our Q net. So that's what basically is the soil with the weight of the actual footing itself is gonna be able to support. So that's our Q net. We then come in with this formula right here, Q equals PA, and we can rearrange it because we know what Q is. Our Q is gonna be our Q net, but we want to find the area. So we could change it to area equals P over Q net. The area is what we're looking for. Pressure, we need to calculate out still, which isn't too bad to do. It's just adding up all of our live and dead loads or any of the reaction forces from the beams and girders onto our columns and the Q net we have. So, going like that. So, area equals P of the column over Q net. Now, what do we have for our reaction forces and our girders and beams here? So some numbers that uh, we have is our roof beams. So these are all from the roof are gonna be, and the beam is 5,000 pounds. Our roof girders, now they're gonna be supporting those beams, 10,000. Then we have the second floor. So any of this stuff here. So second floor beams, second floor girders. Uh, those are gonna be 13,000. 500, I believe, for the beams. And then for the girders, we're just gonna double that number and we're gonna call that 27,000 pounds. Now, uh, what we're gonna do is we're gonna multiply, we have two beams, so if we look in this diagram here, so we have beam, beam. So we're gonna basically multiply these numbers by two here. So we're gonna get, and then add up all this. So this is times two, and the same with this one is times two. So when we do 10,000, oh, sorry, uh, 10,000 plus 10,000, is going to be, oh, and that's also, these are all times two, because we have two girders and the two beams, like that. Uh, we should get 111,000 pounds. So 111,000 pounds is basically this right here, pushing down onto the spread footing. So area equals pressure of the column, 111,000 pounds divided by Q net, 1,700 pounds per foot squared. So if we get the calculator out for this one, this 
so 111,000 divided by 1700, we get 65.3, roughly, 0.3 feet squared. That is the area. Uh, if we want to make it just a real, just a square, so then we'll do the square root of 65.3 feet squared, and then that will give us the dimensions of our square. So let's go into a calculator, square root. So that's 8.08. There we go, 8.08 .08 feet. For square spread footing, or we'll just say an eight by eight by two foot thick footing. And that's it. That's how you size the spread footing. If we wanted it to be a circle, we would have to do pi r squared equals that's sixty five point three, and then you would be going to find the radius of the circle. Or if maybe you wanted something else, uh, you could do a ten by I don't know six. Uh, 0.5 foot um, rectangular footing, but that number right there is important. And then just for a basic square spread footing, that's how you calculate it out. So hopefully at this point, you should be able to calculate the size of a spread footing. I'll give you a couple practice problems and uh, we'll go over them a little bit later into the week, but that's about it. So have a good day. Bye.